Growing up, I was always asked, what does your name mean? Where does it come from? And it's Arabic. It literally means word, word of God, sign of God, the symbol of God. There is beauty in loss and gaining of wisdom. You can't have one without the other. <laughs> I was going to do my makeup off camera, but I realized why not just do it on camera because we're talking anyway. We're freaking just chilling. And this is going to be an amazing episode anyway, because you guys, I just landed two days ago and oh my God, I'm literally so exhausted and actually very relaxed and so, so grateful. You know, people kept asking me, Oh, like, um, was it a successful trip? And I have to remind myself, like, a successful trip, a successful trip is a trip where you didn't lose anything. You didn't get sick or have to go to the hospital in a different country. You didn't get your things stolen. Like, you didn't come home broke. <laughs> like, yes, it was very much a successful trip. And that is... I think a win in always. The only thing I will say is that United fucking Airlines, okay? Let's just start there. Literally, United Airlines had the audacity to tell me, first of all, my trip was coming back from Morocco, which was the last country that I went to. It was Morocco to Germany, to Chicago, to Florida. Um, I'm from LA here visiting family before I go back to LA. And this is going to be difficult, but my mirror is over here. Um, yeah, so I was just like, I was so happy when they told me, oh, we're going to check your bags to your destination. Obviously, that's like a dream. And I'm so happy about that because that means that I could like basically just take my backpack on on the plane and not have to worry about my carry on, which, by the way, was 100 pounds. And it's just going to meet me in Florida, like perfection. I get to Chicago and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, I know that Morocco told you that, but you need to go back and recheck your bags like you're free to check your bag but you need to go to the baggage claim get your bag go and check it and then it'll meet you in tampa so that of course took an hour which made me miss my flight not because i was late but because united airlines chose to make an itinerary that said oh you'll only have an hour to get to your next gate when they knew that security alone would have been 45 minutes. I'm trying this new thing where I want to like be really cool and calm and collected on this audio. Almost giving you, you know, those cool ASMR vibes. But yeah, like passionate, really annoyed, like really, really, really frustrating. And um, oh my God. So yeah, of course, once I arrive in Florida my brand new luggage from base. I do marketing. I do a lot of event marketing in Los Angeles. And I was the manager for bases pop up at the Grove. And literally the bag that they gifted me is brand new. It's literally like steel. The, um, it's basically steel. My dad says it's aluminum, but the thing is so freaking hard, right? For them to have broken the zipper, which is the it's the zipper that locks the entire bag. Like you use the zipper to lock your entire bag for that to be broken. That means that it got snagged on something and they didn't care. They just was like, oh, it's snagged and they just ripped it. I don't know, but I'm telling you, you have to work really hard to break that. Like it's not easy to break that. Okay, first of all, anyone who travels knows that your friends, your family, like everyone from America wants you to bring stuff back. Um, my mom's birthday was while I was in Dubai. So three continents, three different countries, and 30 days, almost 40 days. Um, and my mom was like, don't get me anything, of course. But of course, I had to get her something. My mom's hijabi. She's mostly turban style. And um, she's not a label person at all, 
Um, but I was like, I want to get her something that is um, just special. And it doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to be um, a brand, but maybe it like hints to some brands, because if you know, you know, like overseas, there's the best replicas and the best knockoffs. So I got her this incredible Gucci scarf. And I also got her like the most beautiful lime colored. It's like a, a green lime, like contrasted color Louis Vuitton scarf. And then I got um, this Hermes sheet, you know, the classic Hermes sheets that you lay on your cover. I mean, on your couches, I had to get her that. And, um, you know, of course, she's not going to. She's at first very grateful, but she's also like, oh, my gosh, like you didn't have to get all this. And it was really great. Um, you know, it was I can't wait for her to wear it. Um, and uh, last but not least, I got um, her some Turkish tea. So all Muslim countries like tea is like a big thing, like in the Middle East and Turkey had some there was this brother, like I literally was just walking down this random street and this Turkish dude was like, this is definitely not going to be easy. <laughs> um, this Turkish dude was like, um, sorry, hold on, trying to get the lining together. But this Turkish dude was like, please like try this uh, sweets. And it was so good. Like it was like, I don't even know how to describe it. Honestly, I'm, I'm being so honest. The flavors in Turkey, you don't know how to explain it. And my friend who is a chef, um, shout out Sugar Baba, the Sugar Baba, the Sugar Baba on Instagram, Asukur Baba, um, Fil Arabiya. Um, he literally like is like he's one of those people who can eat something and like fully break down the ingredients and i was just like oh my god like i have to get a box of this to come back but the place had the most unbelievable smells of just different teas that are basically like dried flowers like the most beautiful beautiful um presentation of tea and i just was like okay go ahead and pack me a bag he doesn't show me the bag he packs literally like five, seven, I would even say 10 pounds of stuff because I got the tea and I got some Turkish delights. By the way, I got my mom this flower tea where it's it looks like a flower like before it blooms. And when you put it in hot water, boiling water to drink or even your bathtub, it opens up into a flower. And I was like, I have to like run my mom a bubble bath and put these inside of there. Bags it up vacuum seals it doesn't say oh i just wanted to show you like is this enough or is this too much it was like oh she's american she just told me she's coming from dubai by the way i'm gonna go ahead and pack her up uh three thousand turkish lira which was about three hundred dollars almost three hundred dollars i said i'm not rich sir I literally was like fed up because in turkey like the minute you say you're american all they see is dollar signs what are the Turkish people paying? They ain't paying $300. They're not paying the price of their rent in tea. So I'm like, I know that it's by the weight, sir. You need to unvacuum seal all this stuff and, and lighten up the load because I'm not about to carry this in my bag that's already full anyway. He goes back and forth with me. By the way, I am the best negotiator in the world. And I wasn't playing like I'm not one of these cute little uh, submissive like Muslim women like, no, I'm from America. I'm also from Los Angeles. Like, you know, we we know how to hustle. So I'm like, you're not going to hustle me. He gets down to one hundred dollars. Honestly, I got like I got a watermelon tea, a pomegranate tea. I'm talking about the best tea I've ever had. Um, I got watermelon. I got mango. I got apple. And then I got this box of Turkish delights. And then, of course, the tea for my mom. OK, so basically my trip to 
these countries was not about spending money on buying things, right? Like everyone who knows they want to shop in other countries knows that if you are only allotted a checked bag and a carry-on, you keep that carry-on empty, you put it inside the checked bag and you lay just very thin clothes on top of it. So I literally like bringing things for other people, but then also, um, knew that I was only going to be spending money really on food. And then I might get a couple of things, you know, that would be easy to bring back, not anything giant. In that case, you know, I've bought rugs and stuff from Morocco. I'm obsessed with Moroccan rugs, African rugs, African, even just art in general. And, um, so I was like, if I, if I ever, you know, when I do that, sometimes it's cheaper to mail it. Like there it's, it's cheaper to mail from their systems than to even mail, you know, it, then, you know, having to mail to us via a us postal service so yeah um i wasn't getting rugs this time i was very focused but i did want to get a couple cute things um i already have some incredible moroccan shoes but are you kidding me like it's leather on the inside i just absolutely love these shoes they had them in black they had them in cream they're very like wedding-esque you know probably for aids which is like you know just religious celebrations and stuff but so comfortable and i haven't even broken them in but i'm actually probably gonna sell these like (laughs) i have shoes already and i don't like unless i you know i might wear them once but i'm Pretty much it was for if I find someone that can fit them and that wanted them as a gift. I will say going to Marrakesh um, for my first and second time in Morocco. My third time this time was in Rabat. But literally, like, I will say, don't tell my friends in Rabat that I told you, but definitely better deals, better shopping in Marrakesh because it's so competitive and there's so much stuff. Shoes number two, baby. Are you kidding me? Just such a vibe. Also leather inside. Very, very comfortable. And I just love them. They're such a vibe. And what I love about Muslim countries is that there's no like homophobicness in the sense, right, of, oh, he has on pink. Because there's no concept of like gayness because it's just not normalized, right? So to have diamonds, to have crystals on your shoes, like a man could totally wear these. And don't get me wrong, it would take a, a, a type of man who says, I want to be a little bit more um, flashy. Not all men, especially I would say in Morocco specifically, they're not as flashy. They might have stitching like this, but they wouldn't probably do this, especially since this was like technically in the woman's section. But I think a daring man, okay, maybe gay men, whatever. But I do think a daring man would like wear these. I know some black American men, especially like even in the hip hop game who would totally rock these and it wouldn't be a situation okay so in dubai for the arabia in arabic it's not dubai dubai it's dubai no so that means yes so my mom and my dad like we went shopping by the way a whole debacle with my parents because i thought i was going to be doing the whole dubai trip by myself right they're they like last minute they're like we're gonna come in a week like if you can find tickets let us know flying emirates direct from tampa bay i think tampa or orlando seven hundred dollars to fly emirates like y'all gotta really do your research like dubai is not expensive i don't know why it's like i don't know who told y'all that and i really would love sources because i need to know of course over downtown the burj khalifa like you might spend twenty dollars on a plate but twenty dollars on a plate Like, I live in L.A. Like, that's the corner store. Like, that is literally the mom and pop at the end of the road. Like, if you want some Jamaican food, it doesn't even in in Florida, which used to be a lot more affordable. A twenty dollar plate is the norm, like 15, 20 dollars is the norm. So to know that you're going to top restaurants for 20 and 15 dollars, you know, um, there was a celebrity that posted he got steak with caviar when Beyonce was there. He got steak with caviar, $300 for steak with caviar. I was like, boy, don't go to Beverly Hills, which I know he'd been to Beverly Hills. So I'm like, 
why are you acting like this is a lot? Like, that's the norm. And you're getting caviar, sir. You're getting halal steak. You're getting caviar. Anyways, we went to Gold Souk, which is a famous, like, section of Dubai. And Dubai, you know, I'm doing... You'll, you'll have to check my other videos. You guys definitely, definitely subscribe because I am making this, like, literally so many parts just sort of covering different categories of my trip. And I'm definitely going to talk about just how diverse Dubai is in the sense of like, you go over here for this stuff and you go over here for this stuff. And if you're more Europeanized, you might want to stay in this area, you know, whatever. But honestly, the entire, everyone speaks English. So the entire, for the most part, the entire city of Dubai and even the country of UAE um, is very like, very different everywhere's a little different but you know minus the culture not as much culture right um but gold souk which is surrounded by you know african women e uh, eritrean somalian ethiopian that's kind of where it seems like their hub is and they're just making pennies but they're living you know you can very much live there with 400 dollars a month you can live in dubai um so yeah like you know you see gold, like the most beautiful gold, tax-free, like real, real gold, not gold plated like here in America, like real amazing gold, right? And then like right next door, you'll see beautiful like tea. And then you'll also see a brother who's like Indian selling the most luxurious, beautiful cashmere hijabs and scarves. So um, I am just a sucker for beautiful colors. If you guys know, like I have definitely done on my TikTok just amazing videos on um, just head wraps and different styling. And I love contrasting materials. I love like I love when it's maybe one color, but on the other side is a different color, because when you twist it, you kind of get just these different uh textiles throughout your scarf i just okay so first and foremost let's bring out this lime green baby girl right here <laughs> i am so close to this mic i hope i don't mess up but um the most beautiful Dubai like textures. One thing I will say about Dubai too is that Dubai is all about quality. Like you it's affordable. It's affordable, but like you're not going to find like really cheap stuff. Like, you know, Morocco you might find like beautiful things that are going to pretty much last in 2 weeks if you're lucky, but it's so cheap. Like I got shoes like that not with the leather but basically the same design no crystals with for like three dollars five dollars six dollars and you know you don't want to wear it every day because it's going to hurt your feet because it's like not there's no real cushion there it's more of just a style but you know it's it's like maybe you know quality is not the number one goal it's more of a look dubai is all about the look but all about the quality and i think that that speaks to the fact that they're you know uae is a country that has only been around for 40 years 50 years so they're still very much trying to set that tone of this is where you go if you want this type of thing if you want this type of lifestyle if you want this type of um experience and so yeah like, come on. Oh, my Lord. I just... My hair's so big right now, but... I just can't wait to, like, bring this out. Of course, if I wanted to wrap, if I wanted to do that, if I want to do a turban, just so insanely beautiful another thing i really love about dubai right is although there's not like a culture and when i say that you know you go to turkey 
and you know you're gonna get Turkish food. You go to Morocco, you know you're gonna get Moroccan food. You go to Dubai and it's like whatever you're in the mood for, Google it and there's something there. It's probably 24 hours, probably really cool. Um, but there is a culture of modesty, um, which throughout all the countries, being Muslim countries, there's definitely a um, culture of modesty, but I love that no matter where you're from, which by the way, it's 80% expats, meaning everyone who lives there is not from there. Literally most people are from other places and they're mostly from like Muslim countries, but even if they're not, they like they go to the mall, right? And of course there's short dresses and stuff, but you're not going to see anyone with their boobs out. You're going to see people like maybe this at most, and you're definitely going to see them just more conservative and it's fashion it's challenging your fashion in a modest and fun and beautiful beautiful way yeah i love the idea of literally everywhere you look like people are dressed but they are like covered and like just flowing like the keftans like also just so many europeans there and you know even them like unless it's the club night right which girls get in free everywhere by the way we get them free everywhere. We get, and not only do we get them free, we get three free beverages, free meals. Like it's a woman's playground for sure. But more on that later. Definitely subscribe because there's a catch to everything. Yes, they don't. You know, the men there, they're Muslim, so they don't expect a lot in return. But they ain't working for free. Either. You know, they out here like courting because they hope that maybe you'll give them a chance. That's a conversation for another episode. Oh my God. I, I, I have ha I'm doing this now because things are a bit more fresh in my brain. Plus, I wanted to get to my scarves and finally get to wear them. But I needed to do the unboxing. But there's just so much that I could uncover. And I don't know. I, I, people, people who do the research and people who have been to Dubai even visiting, they already know these things. But yeah, there's so much to talk about. Oh my God. Like. Oh my God. It's giving. <laughs> Wait, what was that? <laughs> I just love it. So I actually tried this one on at Gold Souk, right? By the way, you can get scarves anywhere, but um, you're not always, you know, different sales, different sellers may have the same color, but different material, the same patterns, but different colors. Like there's always something, right? Like I love how on this side, it's like clear, no crystals. And then on this side, it's like just the cutest iridescent crystals. And then come on, like, come on. Look at those different oranges and pinks. Like, I just love it. And so I could twisty, twisty like that. But honestly, I don't even want to wrinkle it because it's just so beautiful. I think I'm going to do, like, come on. like. And the thing is, is that I could just do this. I could just do this. Pull this a little bit out maybe tuck it under my scarf here put on a jacket like come on like this alone is such a vibe but i could also take it the next level right and add this and tuck it here oh my god and you know me, I'm doing something really fast now, but I would I would totally trick this thing out, honey. I would just make it a whole situation, like, oh my God. I just love it, it's so pretty. I tried this on and I was just like, I can't leave it. This was 12 bucks, <laughs> which was the American price. He probably sells these for like eight to 10, you know? But it's real cashmere. It's so soft. Oh my god, look at this. Look. You could just wear it like this. And that's what I'm saying. What you're getting right now is just imagine it everywhere in Dubai. Like not everywhere, right? Um, 
but 50 percent 50 percent of dubai you're gonna see just like regular people from countries where they never dress like this but in dubai you bring that modest hotness like you bring that like you want to take me out oh okay let's go like let's go shop dubai marina and then maybe we'll talk like let's go get coffee let's go get tea let's go to rooftop pool like oh inshallah i'll see you later i might text you i might not so last but not least we have this like sort of like a basic natural like brown tone scarf on this side we have this beautiful textile right this beautiful like color right and then you flip it over and then you've got this like amazing textile that just like melts like chocolate like chocolate on your skin and on your face because it's just so soft so complimentary to your complexion that you just want to like keep it on all day doesn't matter if it's hot doesn't matter if it's cold it's breathable it's just such a vibe right oh my god so this one <laughs> when i tried this one on we were trying out cologne so it still smells like different perfumes and by the way one thing i love about dubai is like it's fresh air it's the cleanest place you will ever go the people are so nice it's unbelievable how nice the people are um, and we'll talk about that later because there's a reason why the culture is so strictly like behave, behaving. Everyone's so very behaved and very nice. The whole country, like the minute you get off the plane, right, is like beautiful fresh air. By the way, I went like their winter time, which is like 75 degrees, which is basically LA, like year weather year round. And so I know that I got the Disney World version of Dubai because the weather was so amazing. Usually it's 110, 120, 130 Fahrenheit. But um, there's a smell of expensive cologne and perfume, oud, which by the way, like most of America's consumed and purchased and sought after fragrances are from africa are from the middle east are from you know europe which even them they're getting it from africa they're getting it from the middle east so oud is just this like non-alcohol like no alcohol just like it lasts all day but it's different scents like you might smell it in the first part of the day and, and you're getting something fruity and then later on you're getting something a little bit more spicy like Oh my God, they just smell so good. And so this scarf literally still smells like it. <sighs> but yeah, this one is a little bit more toned down. I love that it shines almost like a leather. Like I love it. I just love it. And so, like I said, the two toned colors, like I just can't wait to play with this because you know just to be able to like see what type of different patterns i can make in my scarves like look at the other side wait i'm wearing it backwards and i didn't even know so pretty Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate the subscriptions. I really do. I have so much more tea, so much more chai to share with you um, about my experiences traveling as well as in life, career, everything. Um, I do a lot. So um, I'm always here to drop gems and Jazakallah Khair for watching this far. Tell me your favorite item that I got. Um, tell me if you want to know something else that maybe I didn't mention. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye.